Hello everybody and welcome, I'm Simon Leach. Welcome to the studio. What I want to do today is just very briefly talk about pouring lips. Pouring lips, you say? Yes, pouring lips. Because as potters, <laughs> we always tend to have a problem making a pouring lip, whether it be on a jug or teapot or whatever it is, that doesn't drip. They always tend to drip. Do you have that problem? I do. <laughs> Let's go to the wheel head where the action is. And I'm just going to make, I'm just going to make a small, a small jug and so centering up the clay as usual. Now when you, after you've got your lump of clay, just put your finger there like that to centre it right down to the wheel head. So, just opening now. This is just to bring me to a point where I've got something that I can make a lip on. Now I don't pretend to be the world's greatest authority on pouring lips, but I'm just going to throw in my pennyworth and see. That might help somebody. And somebody might also come back with some good ideas. Maybe we can open up the subject. Because it is a it is something that is a hot topic if you like. So I'm just gonna do it very basically a simple cylindrical form like that. I give it a slight belly. You can make cylindrical jugs without bellies, we can make make them with a belly. I don't know why I tend to think of jugs as having having bellies. So just going to stick that off with my my little bamboo stick. Don't forget, put in a bevel underneath at the base of your pots. All right, let's let's just say that's the. I'm not going to fuss around it too much at this stage. Okay, sponge on a stick. Where's my sponge on a stick? Ah, there she is. Thank you. So, sponge on a stick, useful for getting down into those difficult to reach places. So we're going to leather the rim. Now I'll just show you how I pull a lip. Now just to explain what's going on here. Now some people when they, it's not just a case of def deforming the, the, the rim of the pot. We're not just sort of pushing it out. It's not that we're actually pulling it. So I take two fingers like that, put it over the, 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 the edge of the pot like that. And then with my index finger of my other hand, okay, going on the inside, I then work the clay like that with a gradual movement like that, slightly left to right, left to right, and pushing, pushing outwards. These two fingers here are holding back the rest of the of the of the rim okay whereas this finger is extending this little piece of clay here in other words the platelets of clay are gradually opening out the clay is opening out it's extending itself just in this particular area so let's just continue with that so I'm holding it back there and I'm wiggling it like that and slightly you see what I'm doing Okay, and that's giving me that look. The apart from the bit that you've pulled, the remaining part I like to just redondify perhaps a little bit. Okay. 
Okay. So that's that. There we are. We've, pu we've pulled the lip on the jug. Now you can do that on any kind of jug. You can reach down deeper with your finger and pull out more of a throat here also. But this is just like a standard, standard pulled uh, lip. Now on the subject of um, lips, uh, pouring lips, they it's very difficult to, to I find to to get a to make the the jug um, so that it doesn't drip, and I just wanted to talk about that very briefly. Um, I don't pretend to have all the answers. The problem is when it's even though you can make it quite nice and crisp and pointy on the end here. Once you've once you've put it through the kiln and glazed it, the glaze sort of globulates over the whole of the edge of the pot, doesn't it? So that when you use the jug and you pour, it doesn't cut off that last little drip. And this is the problem. It's always that last little drip that that you want it to go back in the jug, but it, instead of going back in, it, it runs on down on the outside. And there's something uh, about the way that the, the shape of the, the, or the termination of the, of the lip is, that it somehow, I don't know how it is, what do they call it, capillary action or something, it sort of it sucks it over the edge rather than going back in the jug. Um, what I have done, uh, and have had partial success with is to when I come to glazing the jug just at, just at that little last point there where my finger is I put just a little bit of wax just a little bit of wax there okay so what happens when we, we dip the jug in the glaze and just where that little bit of wax is there the glaze there is no glaze just there it's just the raw clay just on that little bit on the edge there and I have found that um, then when I use the jug, when it's finished, when I come to pour, that last little bit of clay that it doesn't have glaze on it just there seems to cut off the, the, the droplet that much better. And now that's something to experiment with how far over the edge to put that wax. It doesn't, it only is right on the very edge and it could extend a little bit over the edge but that's just, I, uh, to be honest, I haven't really sussed that one out. But, um, well, there's a few thoughts on uh, a pouring lip. Now, it could also be a teapot spout. It might have a similar problem. It's another uh, kind of pouring lip, a spout of a teapot that also um, can have these problems. So, well, Perhaps, um, perhaps somebody out there has got some feedback, some ideas on on the on the subject of pouring lips and how we can make them more efficient. Well, I think we should strive towards um, perfection in terms of the the functionality of the things that we make and try to get them to um, to work as best they can. So there we are, Simon Leach here in, from the studio in Spain saying keep practicing and <laughs> we'll hang on in there and we'll see you in the next clip. Okay, bye bye now.